Welcome back to the Global Goal Studio. We're talking about vulnerable communities. Uh, Eddie and Dopu, you're spearheading a new brand of social impact and social justice advocacy. You've coined this term beyond zero. What does that mean to you and how do you envisage it changing the world? Sure. So Beyond Zero um, is a philosophy and an invitation to get the world to move beyond the minimum thresholds that we've embraced, right? So the fact that so many millions of people are being plunged into extreme poverty right now is an indication that they were already precarious beforehand, right? And we were counting this as progress, right? We're counting the fact that people converge from $1 a day to $2 to $3 a day. And that has not been sufficient in terms of resilience to be able to withstand uh, the sort of crisis that we're living through right now. So crisis after crisis after crisis, we continue to embrace compliance, ticking a box, the minimum threshold, zero, as it were, as a way to make sense of um, people's day-to-day -day, uh, lives, right? So beyond zero is really about centering dignity agency self-actualization going beyond just the very basic building blocks of what it means to live a life to be able to truly validate the full humanity um, of vulnerable populations thank you emmett fleming the united nations has a very nuanced image around the world you're trying to revamp that image so what is your goal and what is your vision for the united nations well i mean i think that our communication strategy is about not only to inform people. I mean, I, when I came in, I thought, wow, yeah, we have so much data on people, on the situation of the world. And we have great science, and we have terrific information, and we have amazing ideals. But how are we going to get people to care? Um, and what are we going to ask them to do? And that is the communications challenge that we face. So. Um, we have uh, another challenge, too, with COVID-19, and that is um, it's not just that we, there's lots of good information that needs to travel to people uh, so people can consume it, but that information in this digital social media age also needs to be consumable. It needs to be entertaining. It needs to be accessible. And so we're trying to package this content to tell stories and also to compete with the purveyors of misinformation and disinformation who are putting out you know, lies, frankly, um, misinformation that is actually risking um, human health uh, is confusing people and is really putting, um, uh, you know, making our public health response extremely difficult. And uh, so we have a, um, we're trying to you know, kind of flood the internet with good information, with great storytelling and trying to be at least um, as entertaining as those who are trying to mislead us. Thank you. Andrew Dunnett, uh, last word goes to you. Um, as we think about vulnerable populations, you know, it, it does throw into sharp focus this idea, this notion that, uh, that people have had that says poverty is inevitable, right? You have people who are vulnerable, who have these perhaps chronic uh, uh, conditions, what do you say to those people who say, we can't do anything about this, that you know, uh, the solutions are just out of reach? I think um, <clears throat> you know, Melissa made the point that uh, uh, that's a very sad and depressing vision of the future and the future of humanity. I mean, uh, you know, I work for a tech company um, and 350 million people are empowered every day of the week through the digital infrastructure that we build. Uh, 50 million people have access to finance through mobile money and through the M-Pesa platform that wouldn't have had access to finance before. Um, you know, through connected learning and through working with the UN, more people have access to studying. You know, I met a guy in uh, uh, in in uh, one of the refugee camps we're working with who's who's doing his accountancy finals while he is stuck in a camp. So, I, you know, I think that. Um, uh, what we have to do to countenance that 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 perception and view is to show you know how things are moving forward uh, and particularly when you talk about you know vulnerable people i mean uh, we've been working for 10 years in the space of uh, of domestic violence um and using technology to protect people at that period in their life when they are experiencing abuse and 
in most of the countries which we're operating, that, that's one in four women. So, you know, I, I see a, a much more hopeful and positive future. I think the UN has laid out for us uh, in the SDGs a very clear, uh, you know, a very clear and a route to the future. And I think if you look at the, the global business community, I think there's a, a genuine feeling that the business needs to be part of the solution rather than part of the problem. Um, and I think we've had some extraordinary business leaders in recent years who've really put their foot forward and showed us the way to that vision. So I'm much more positive. But I think sometimes, um, as, as I think Eddie said, I think sometimes it's stories that really capture people's imagination. You need data. You need a framework. But it's, it's the actual compelling of lives changed and stories that really show people that the future can be much more positive. Um, you know, and, and that uh, we have hope in, 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 uh, in the UN and, 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 and the vision that it's got for where we should go as global humanity. Eddie, I'll give you actually the last word. I think it was Nelson Mandela who said that poverty was man-made and the solutions are man-made. Uh, you're going a long way yourself to, give us, to, to giving us some solutions today. So uh, last word for you. Where do you stand on that optimism curve? Well, it was also Nelson Mandela who said that it always seems impossible until it's done. And I believe that we're able to get the SDGs done. Uh, there are the blueprint, there are the framework. The other thing I would say is that we need to understand the SDGs as indivisible from one another. And the SDGs, the SDGs are deeply personal. It's about people's ability to live lives of dignity and being able to breathe freely in the world. That's really what it is. And so um, as, as Andrew and as uh, Melissa said, it really is about the personal narrative and about these individual lives um, that seek to have depth and meaning. Um, and so that's what it's about. So I'm certainly optimistic. Great. Eddie, Andrew, thank you so much. And Ms. Fleming, thank you for coming you. into the studio today. We really appreciate it. It was really great to be with you here Excellent. today. All right. Stay with us. You're watching Global Goals Studio. Mm -hmm.